are back with another Blender tutorial and today we are going to make a sphere and make a perfect, cut it in half, show you how to create a plane and ultimately over here to the right I have a little picture of a Voltorb. Uh, it's a little Pokemon that is, should be really easy to make and design so that's what we're going to be working on just to show us the interface between going from object mode to edit mode again keeping it very simple bite-sized tutorials here so right off the bat we can go to add let's add a uv sphere so again when we see the sphere we're going to notice hey there's a lot of faces on that and we want it to be a perfect a circle a perfect sphere so here on the right go to add modifier we're going to go to subdivision surface let's take this to a four that makes it just look a lot better so now we're going to need to cut this in half because our voltorb half is red half is white we're making a 3d model and we want obviously to be able to print that in two different files so let's go to edit mode so there's two mo ways to do that here in the top left we can go to edit mode we can also just hit the tab button so once we do this I'm going to center this roundabout. So there is a operation over here, and it is called knife. Now, we don't want knife. We want bisect. So if you left click and hold it, hold that left click, you're going to get a little panel. Bisect is now an option. We want to bisect this sphere. So choose a point here in the middle, and I'm just going to cut all the way across let go you know you've cut it when you see this little tool this allows you to move your line up and down I like it where it's at it's right in the middle now what we want to do next is we're gonna call it rip what it's going to do is create and cut that line that we just created so by hitting rip which is V just hit the letter V as in Voltorb and you can see now I can rip this however I want I can make it look really funky I can move it down however I want however we want a nice clean cut so what I'm going to do is just hit the right mouse button by doing the right mouse button that automatically goes to this bisecting line so you don't get anything super funky by manually having to do that so now we cut that in two, but we need to separate it. Right now, the system just thinks, okay, you made like a, a cut between this object, but this is still one object, this sphere. There's no way to separate it right now. So if we hit Control L, that is going to highlight the top portion of our sphere. Now, I know you're going to be tempted to go to Select Box, but that only selects the faces that you see. So if I did select box and I chose this top, well, every face that I see here would in fact be selected. However, I'm not seeing the faces from my point of view back here behind, so those wouldn't be selected, so that's not what I would want. So now that I have the top sphere selected, hit, you can go to mesh, and you can go to separate, or you can just push that P button. So do P, and you see immediately now we have a separate object, Sphere and Sphere 001, and they look like two different objects now. So I'm going to hit Tab, go back into object mode, and we see that I now have two different halves of a sphere. So I'm going to move this up. Now, if you are modeling just to... I don't know, for the looks of it. And you really only need a screenshot, something like that. You don't need to fill this in. However, I want to 3D print this. And so I want to fill these hemispheres in. So I'm going to just get a little lined up here. So by selecting one hemisphere and hitting tab, I can do control, or I'm sorry, shift, alt, and select on one of the vertices right here. That selects that entire face, that entire loop. So when you do that, you can do F. Uh, it's somewhere, is it in mesh? Somewhere up here, there's something called fill. And that's what we want to do with F, is fill. 
my apologies. I forgot where it was up here. Right here, fill. I'm going to go ahead and just hit F. That's going to fill that in. Now, note, right off the bat, you're like, what the heck is this? This took me a long time to figure out because it doesn't make sense. The best what I can explain is when you bisect this sphere in two, it creates some weird topography. So when you fill it, the system thinks that you wanted to follow that bisecting line. May not make a whole lot of sense. Thankfully, the only thing you need to do is hit E for extrude and then hit the right mouse key and there we go now we have that hemisphere then we're gonna go back into object mode select our lower hemisphere do edit mode again Hit hit tab again shift alt select one of those dots so now we have our loop we're gonna hit F we are going to hit E and then we're going to right click so there we go. Now we have two halves. We're going to go into object mode. We've got two halves of a circle, and that already looks like a pretty good little Voltor, but we're well on our way. All right, now that we have our Voltor base, we need to make the eyeballs. So to do this, let's do Shift A. We are going to add a plane. Now, Shift A is simply just adding a mesh or an object. So rather than going to add, we can do shift A. At this point, I'm going to move this plane away from Voltorb and I'm going to enter into edit mode. So there is a tool right down here. I already have it selected called vertex slide. So this allows us to choose one of these little endpoints and move it along the same plane. There's also methods that you can change in the Z direction if you want to add some curve to whatever your object is. We don't want that here. We'll just keep it flat. And there we go. That looks like a pretty decent uh, Voltorb eye. And now I'm going to hit object mode. So this clearly is too big. So we're going to go in the scale. Now note that if you accidentally click on the blue, red, or green line here, then it is going to scale only in that direction. Kind of annoying. I've done it many times accidentally, so just be careful of that. Make this smaller. i maybe put it right there. Now we can rotate. So notice on the top left is where you can see how much you have rotated this. So that's about 90 degrees. I'm not going to make this perfect because I don't want to waste your time. My main thing is I just want you to get the button pushes and what tools exist for us to use here in Blender. So this eye clearly is a little too big, but I don't want to waste your time. So I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to do Control C because I have that plane selected. Control V. So I've just copied this. I'm going to move that over, rotate this 180 degrees. And uh, very roughly, I have my little Voltorb. I've got a couple eyes, and I've got, obviously, again, they're too big. They're not close to the actual body, but again, I just want you to see part of modeling is then going in, making it perfect, right? But I don't want to do that to you right now. So the final thing I do want to share is if you want to color these things, what you can do is select an object. So I'll check the top of Vol Voltorb here. And there is a panel over here on the right called Material Properties. So what we're going to do is New. And here we can name whatever we would like so i'm going to do v top for voltorb top and there's a base color we can change that to red and there we go one thing to note here because this caught me off guard as well when i first started if you depending on up here in the top right what view you are in you may not see the color change normally we are in solid mode so that is this little icon right here you see viewport shading we are in solid mode 
you won't see color there. However, if you go over here to material preview, that you can see color. So I can select the bottom. I'm gonna do V bot or Voltor bottom. This is kind of already white, but I can make it an even more white. There we go. I can do the same thing to the eyes and it looks pretty good what we have right now for Voltorb. I'm going to pretty this up. The next video, I'm going to show you sculpt mode and how to really perfect this Voltorb. And then we'll have our first 3D print ready to go. But hopefully you found this useful a little longer than I intended this to be. But hopefully, again, it was useful to you. If you have questions, comment below. Thank you for watching.